What is up, y'all? It's the homie Koru back with another video. We are doing the Kybalion, and we are on the second law, the law of correspondence. So let's dive right in. The law of correspondence basically states that as above, so below, as below, so above. Now, I stated previously that the seven hermetic laws are basically all the first law and then explanations and dissections of the first law. Um, and so the law of correspondence, the way that I see it, of course, is that the all relates to everything else. And so as above, as the all is, so everything else is. Everything is a reflection of this. And this reminds me of in the Christian Bible where they say man is made in the image of God. It's kind of that same idea, right? That um, as above, so below, as it's created, so it's in, endowed and bestowed upon the creation. In a, in a certain type of a way. But this obviously goes much further as well. One, one thing is that um, I use the law of correspondence all the time. When I see things happening in my life, or for instance, um, if you were to get sick, being sick would be a manifestation of something metaphysical um, that happened first above, metaphysically, mentally, that manifested physically as below. And so trying to find the seed and the root cause of these types of things is a corresponding element of the law of correspondence. And so, you know, if someone is behaving in a certain way, um, let's say for instance, someone has a drug addiction. Well, it's not that they just consciously made all the bad choices and they're just a horrible person and they just always do drugs and they're just an evil person and blah 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 it's like well that behavior is a response to something metaphysical something above is causing this behavior below likewise if you look at someone who's dramatically wealthy and abundant and um, seems to have just everything going for them well that's not just because they're lucky or because of some type of Oh, their family was rich, so they're rich, or whatever. They have something above, something metaphysical that's manifesting below, something below um, manifesting because of something above. And likewise, you could even say that this works inversely as well. Like um, consciously, if we create some sort of a sigil, some sort of candle magic, some sort of, you know, hermetic, metaphysical, magical symbol below, right? And we impress it into the subconscious where we're, we're creating something below to um, have ramifications above, to change the, the mentality that we have. So, so below as above. And this way, you know, this is also some type of, uh, this is the law of correspondence that people use to explain astrology as well. This would fall into the law of correspondence, where the whole idea would be that intrinsically everything is interconnected. Everything is one thing. So it's not that the planets have this superhuman, super metaphysical, magical power over everything in our lives and it's just some unknowable power or whatever. It's that, you know, everything is one thing. Everything is a fractal of everything else. And so looking to the stars, the ancients realized that certain patterns had certain effects onto the physical plane and that everything was interconnected. So as above, so below. Everything just simply is connected because the universe is mental. So it's all a fractal image of the same thing and so looking to the planets and looking to the stars they could see patterns that were reflected within human life as above so below and likewise um i i've read a book before too um i think it's called the mystery of man but it was talking about how even individual organs can represent the whole body so it's like completely this sort of fractal image of as you go into these layers each of these layers are almost like fractal images of the same thing and if you can understand it on one level the other levels will sort sort of start to open up and within the Kybalion they talk about there being three major divisions between the planes and those divisions are the physical plane the mental plane and the spiritual plane and they do demark in the Kybalion that these are really one plane. There is only ever one plane, and these are all different degrees or grades that flow into each other because everything is the all at its core. But we can break it down into the physical, mental, and spiritual plane for our reference, and it does appear to be that way as well. And not only that, but the, the Kybalion, if you're very interested into 
all of the different um, minutia of the different planes um, and dimensions. The Kabbalion goes into depth about each of these as far as the differentiations between minerals, plants, animals, humans, and how um, each of these mental corresponding um, levels um, have influences upon evolution and the progression of the, the nature of things and how things are manifested. Um, and not only that, but they also talk about how there are other conscious beings out there of a higher order than humans um, so coming from the minerals plants animals humans and beyond there are other higher dimensional um, beings that are further along than us who could be considered gods to us as far as their capabilities and difference but of course um, it's just varying in degree but it's of a higher dimension and, and um, the Kabbalion goes into a decent amount of depth about the difference between these and the existence of these different levels but once again, it is all part of the all, and it is just a simple corresponding sort of like dilation of a fractal of these layers. And um, that's the basics. The the Kybalion goes into depth about these. I think for practical use and for hermetic use, as above, so below, so below, as above. And so the basic core of the whole issue is that of course as your mind is the state that you keep your mind in going back to the mental transmutation is going to manifest within your life as your mind is so your life is as above so below and as the all is and as the all has created this world through its will as above so below and meditating upon this will bring very uh, quite a bit of elucidation upon the subject as always um, but those are the basics and um, to be honest there's not too much more to it uh, and that kind of brings up a point as well where with all of these hermetic laws there is a certain degree of something to be wanted sort of there, there's not exactly um, a multitude of fleshed out scientific papers on each subject and I do believe that there is within the occult and within hermeticism and within these ancient axioms a certain degree of the initiate of the neophyte of the individual to meditate upon these topics and to explore them and to try to become more in tune with their intentional meaning and what the actual subject of the nature of each law is actually truly meaning so um, I would highly recommend trying to become in tune with it so that you could try to explore it for yourself more. And I'm starting to feel the sort of paradox of the law coming into effect, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, excited to keep going with this series. Let me know in the comments how you're feeling about it, if you've read this book, if you're going to read this book, how you're feeling about these videos, um, how I could pr improve, or if you're just loving them. Um, I appreciate all the input, and um, I will catch you guys in the next one. Stick around, and we'll see you then. Peace.